In this video, I'm going to discuss about the remaining concepts on geosynclines. So the first one is the concept of events on geosynclines. So here he says that geosynclines are varied, so it is difficult for them to present about their definite form and location. So he says the geosynclines can be narrow or wide. Continuous sedimentation leads to subsidence, but the shape and form of geosynclines can change with changing environmental conditions. So if the environmental condition changes, the shape and form of the geosynclines also changes. So locations. So the locations can be any any place. So it could be between two landmasses or in front of mountain or plateau or along the margins of continents or in front of river mouth. So it could be any place. So it could be between two landmasses or in front of mountain or plateau or along the margins of the continents or in front of river mouth. After long period of sedimentation, so these material are squeezed and flowed, folded into mountain ranges. So this is a concept of events and geosynclines. So the next view is Schuchert's view and he attempted to classify geosynclines on the basis of their size, location and evolutionary history. So this is mainly on, on the basis of size, location and evolutionary, evolutionary history of geosynclines. So he describes the first one is monogeosynclines. It's long, narrow and shallow water tracks. So it's long, narrow and shallow water tracks but they are subjected to continuous subsidence due to sedimentation load and located within continent or along the borders. They pass through one cycle of sedimentation and mountain building. So this is mono. Mono means one cycle. So mono means one cycle. So they underwent only one cycle of sedimentation and mountain building. Example, Appalachian Mountains. Next one is the polygeosynclines. They are long and wide water bodies. So they are long and wide water bodies existed for long period subjected to orogenesis more than once. So poly means more than once. So it may have more pa parallel and geoanticlines due to squeezing etc. Rocky Mountains and Ural Mountains. Mesogeosynclines, they are long, narrow and mobile ocean basins bordered by continents. So the, these mesogeosynclines are bordered by continents. So this is geosynclines, the bordered by continents around that and have great abyssal depth. So these geosynclines are has more depth. So it's more depth and pass through several geosynclinal phases like sedimentation, subsidence and folding. So even polygeosynclines will undergo many orogenetic, or orogenetic process and mesogeosynclines also will undergo many geosynclinal changes like sedimentation subsidence and folding will take place many times so this geosyncline is one of the example for this next is the view of arthur holmes arthur holmes said that sedimentation can lead to subsidence but gave more importance to thickness of sediments so here he gives more importance to the thickness of sediments and identified four major types of geosynclines and described their mode of origin the first one is formation of geosynclines due to migration of magma. So the migra so my ma, due to the migration, so magma is migrate magma is migrating from inside to the outer crest. So crest is composed of three shells of rocks. One is granodiorite, which is the outer layer, it is about ten to twelve kilometer. So the, this is the crust. Crust is composed of three shells of rocks. The first one is granodiorite and it is the outer layer of about 10 to 12 km and amphibolite with its intermediate layer of 20 to 25 km and peridotite and eclogite. So which makes the lower layer of the crust. So he assumed that magmas migrate from the intermediate layer to neighboring areas which caused the collapse and subsidence of the outer layer and formed geosynclines. So he says that the magma is coming outside. So because of that, this outer layer collapsed. So collapsed and they subsided, they subsided to form the geosynclines. Example, Rossi, Tasman, C. Formation of geosynclines due to metamorphism. So this is due to, the second one is due to metamorphism. The rocks of the lower layer of the rocks are metamorphosed due to compression caused by convective currents. So we know that the, as the depth increases inside the earth, it can, the compression, temperature and temperature can make the rocks a metamorphosed. They can convert the rocks to metamorphosed rocks. 
so these convective currents made the rocks metamorphosed this increased the density of the rocks so as the density increases and they are subjected to subsidence so they are sub subjected to subsidence and formation of geosynclines example caribbean sea mediterranean sea so this this is due to metamorphism the third one is formation of geosynclines due to compression so here here also again the compression plays a major role and the convergent convergent convective currents the out so the, here the convergent compression and con, convergent convective currents play a major role so due to that outer layer subsides to form geosynclines similar to the similar to that of metamorphism example persian gulf the formation of geosynclines due to thinning of celiac layer so here the celiac layer is thinning out because of the thinning out of the celiac layer subsidence is taking place if convective currents reaches the lo lower layer of the crust it will diverge so if the convective layer so the magma is convective layer is rising so it is diverging in this direction so it is which leads to thinning of the celiac layer and subsequently formation of geosynclines example tethys sea otherwise the continental mass may be separated due to tensile forces of convective currents and formed geosynclines so otherwise so one thing thinning of this can cause celiac layer can cause geosynclines otherwise continental mass may be separated so separation of continental mass so the if it gets separated then it can lead to formation of geosynclines next is dustus view so dustus view is he 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 tells about it. this view is based up, based on the location of geosynclines the first one is intercontinent ge intercontinental geosynclines which is located between two land masses example ural geosyncline circum oceanic geosyncline which is found along the marginal areas of the oceans where continental margins meet the oceanic margins so circum oceanic so here the continental margins meet the oceanic margins where it forms so this ge geosynclines are called circum oceanic geosynclines circum continental geosyncline they are located along the margins of the continent so this is a continent so along the margins of the continents they are located so here continental margin is there oceanic margin is there where they are so here it is located they are intercontinental both the, both things are continental so it is inter intercontinental 